Luna Park is the premier amusement park in Coney Island. Spanning multiple areas, this San Perla owned park doubles as the company's showground as the Italian manufacturer has added several prototypes over the years. Not only does the park have some of Zamperla's best attractions, but it also features a rich history and the legendary Cyclone roller coaster. So should this amusement park be on your bucket list? Find out in this review of Luna Park. The current iteration of Luna Park opened in 2010. There used to be a park of this name at Coney Island a long time ago. This one sits on the site of the former Astroland theme park that operated from 1962 to 2008. After Astroland's owners couldn't reach a deal with the land developer for the 2009 season, a series of portable rides were brought in for the Dreamland Amusement Park. But this was just a stopgap carnival until a long-term solution could be found. In 2010, Zamperla won the bid to redevelop Coney Island. They would open Luna Park on Astroland's former site and also take over the operation of the Cyclone and B&B Carousel. And Zamperla has only continued to expand. In 2011, Zamperla opened the Scream Zone with a series of thrill rides. In 2014, the park added Thunderbolt, a prototype Zamperla thrill coaster. The park later added another block of amusements, and in 2022, the park is adding yet another expansion with a new log flume, family coaster, and ropes course. Now, the setup of Luna Park is really weird. Rather than having all the attractions in one boundary, the rides are spread across seven different blocks. Further complicating things is the fact that Dino's Wonder Wheel Park is wedged smack dab in between Luna Park's largest section and the Scream Zone. Many people erroneously visit Dino's Wonder Wheel Park trying to use their Luna Park wristbands, which will not work as they have separate owners. Because of this setup, Luna Park has countless ways to enter and exit the park, so they traditionally have free admission. The policy was suspended at points during 2021 due to COVID-related capacity limits, but guests typically can come and go as they please. If you want to ride anything, it can be pricey. You have the option to either pay per ride or purchase an unlimited wristband. The best rides will cost upwards of $10 alone, so I always go with the wristband. This will cost you upwards of $60 to $70 most days. In 2021, the wristband was only valid for 4 hours of rides, so I'm hoping the time limit is relaxed moving forwards like it was in past years. While the park is pricey, you do get what you pay for. Lines are almost always never an issue here, even on weekends because of that high price point. Cyclone is usually a walk-on. In fact, it's sometimes problematic how few people are riding this classic coaster at once. This is a back row ride in my opinion. However. You can only ride in the back car if there's enough riders to fill the front two cars. And if the ride does happen to have a line, you are not allowed to wait for a specific row. I typically will linger outside the main entrance until enough people start filling the train so I can get that coveted back car. Thunderbolt and Steeplechase are typically the two busiest coasters, and their waits usually hover around 10 to 20 minutes. The rides I would advise hitting early are two flat rides in the Scream Zone. Unlike most parks where slingshots are an upcharge, Luna Park includes theirs on the wristband. It's a one-time only, but still it's cool that it's included. And since it seats just two riders per cycle, this line moves at a snail's pace. The other flat ride with a dismal throughput is the Zenobio Skyscraper ride, which is my personal favorite flat ride there. The only time I've ever encountered substantial weights at the park as a whole was on opening day in 2019 when they had a $5 wristband promotion. It's understandable why guests came out in droves, but the park was busting at the seam. Operations here are excellent when a ride has enough people to fill the entire vehicle. The coasters have large crews, and if a ride has a line, they'll load and check the restraints in the blink of an eye. I've seen Cyclone with a 10-man crew before. On quieter days, you may have to wait a bit while the operator waits for more riders. And that's sort of frustrating here because the wristband had such a strict time limit in 2021. Luna Park has an electric atmosphere. The main section feels like an upscale carnival. And then this park's unique placement allows it to feed off the energy of New York City. Seeing roller coasters literally built on a street corner is a much different and louder aesthetic. On the opposite end of the spectrum, 
Sections of Luna Park are connected by the boardwalk that runs along the beach and Atlantic Ocean. It's a really scenic location for the park, and it's hard to believe you go from this serenity to the hustle and bustle of the street in a matter of seconds. Although it does result in there being zero shade, so just keep that in mind if you're visiting during the daylight. Typically, I visit in the evening. Luna Park is some of the latest hours in the industry. The park is regularly open until 11 or midnight. I also love the lighting packages on several rides, most notably Thunderbolt and how the entirety of its track is illuminated in multi-colors. Moving on to the ride lineup, Luna Park has a very interesting collection of attractions. Most are from Zamperla, understandably. The park currently has seven different roller coasters, with the eighth on the way in 2022. The star is certainly Cyclone. This classic wood coaster opened in 1927, and while the layout has been imitated several times, none of the clones have ever been able to match the intensity and power of the original. Thanks to no seat belts and just a single position lap bar, Cyclone allows you to feel all of its forces to the fullest. Many of the drops in the back deliver some great ejector airtime, while a handful of the ascents up front give some airtime as well. And then everyone is treated to some of the best laterals on any coaster. The lack of seat dividers means you'll be sliding across the entire seat at several points and forcibly pinned against the side of the train. And Zamperla has invested quite a bit to retract this coaster over the past decade, which has it running like a dream. This is a top 10 wood coaster for me, and I go into more detail in a separate review. You then have six steel coasters. The best of the bunch is Thunderbolt. This super narrow coaster has an exciting and fast paced layout with a vertical drop, four inversions, and several bunny hills. The initial drop in bunny hills offer some good ejector airtime, and then the inversions all offer varying degrees of hang time. However, the restraints and track work can result in an uncomfortable ride. The restraints are extremely tight against your thighs, and the trains shuffle throughout the course. Neither of these are deal breakers for me, and because the layout is so strong, I am able to enjoy this ride still. But they're too much for some. I go into more detail in a separate review, but I think this is an underrated ride, and I'm excited for the future of Zamperla coasters. Another often maligned coaster is Soarin' Eagle, a Zamperla Volare flying coaster. I've never had an issue with these rides, and this one is widely considered to be more comfortable than the others. I enjoy this ride's sudden drops, forceful turns, and hang time filled barrel rolls. And this ride doesn't beat me up. Steeplechase is a launched motorbike coaster. The initial launch has more power than you'd expect for a coaster of this scale, and the twisted layout mixes in a few mild pops of airtime along the way. This is the park's best family coaster in my opinion. Tickler is a spinning wild mouse coaster. The ride was modified in recent seasons to start spinning immediately after the lift hill, which offers a different ride experience than the other rides like this that typically don't start spinning until the second half. The spin is especially nice if you can get it during the first two drops. Then you have two junior coasters. The larger of the two is the circus coaster, while the smaller one is the Minnie Mouse, which was actually relocated from Central Park's Victorian Gardens. Luna Park as a whole has a really nice collection of kiddie rides. Most of them are in the main section adjacent to Cyclone. And then there are plenty of flat rides for older guests as well. The best of the bunch is the aforementioned Zenobio. This giant booster is a short cycle, but it offers three rotations in each direction. The second rotation gives some sustained floater airtime with a flip, while the third rotation gives a faster flip. And then you also get some decent positive G's in the downswings. Add in a stunning view of Coney Island and the entire New York City skyline, and you have a winner. Astro Tower is an impressive looking drop tower. While the ride's height and rotating tower offers an amazing view, this is arguably the weakest adult drop tower I've ridden in terms of forces. The drops were slow, offering no airtime nor sensations. Slingshaw is neat how it's included on the wristband, and if you've never tried one of these, this is one of your best opportunities because usually it's a 20 to 30 dollar upcharge at most places. Just watch out for that line. The launch, while sudden, may not be super forceful, but the initial flip at the apex is very thrilling. The B&B Carousel is a very historic attraction. The ride is a beautiful facade and old-fashioned horses, 
but the ride often runs without music nowadays, and it no longer features the brass rings. In the main section, you have a series of spinning and pendulum rides to satisfy all tastes, and there are four worth highlighting. One, Luna 360 is a super forceful inverting frisbee. This ride really piles on the positive G's, while also having some incredible hang time on the inversions. Two, Brooklyn Flyer is a rather short, but still scenic star flyer because of its placement. The views of the ocean and Coney Island are marvelous. Three, Atlantic Aviator is an upgrade as Imperla Air Race with added height, improved visuals, and the same good hang time we've gotten accustomed to. Four, Clockworks is one of those new Zamperla nebulas. This one is a short cycle, but the near misses and motion of this ride are mesmerizing. The park will finally get a good water ride in 2022 with a new flume under construction, although they're still missing a dark ride. Hopefully Zamperla can add one in the future because they've built them elsewhere around the world. In terms of food, I typically visit the restaurants on the main street or boardwalk. Luna Park knows this and they don't really try to compete with them. They use their limited space almost entirely for rides. Lastly, I want to discuss parking. Like with Dino's Wonder Wheel Park, street parking will be your cheapest option, but it can be tricky between availability and the parking rules. Typically, I pay $20 to park in the Brooklyn Cyclones baseball team parking lot. It's well lit and located just off the boardwalk down by the old parachute tower. So do I recommend Luna Park? Absolutely. Coney Island has a really unique atmosphere, and any amusement park aficionado needs to come here at some point in their life. Cyclone is an incredible wooden roller coaster, and then Zamperla has filled the park with a wide range of their coasters and flat rides. The flat rides are universally loved, and while some of the adult coasters are polarizing, I genuinely enjoy them and I encourage you to give them a try. I recommend a half day to a full day at Coney Island. I'd skew more towards a half day if you only care about the roller coasters, and more towards a full day if you care about the non-coasters and non-amusements as well. Most of that time should be spent at Luna Park, but I also recommend visiting Dino's Wonder Wheel Park and the El Dorado Auto Scooter. They're all in close proximity to each other. So those are my thoughts on New York City's Luna Park. What are your thoughts on the premier park at Coney Island? Do you think Zamperla has done as good of a job as me turning this property around? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.